Hi, I'm Juve. You may remember me from such hit YouTube videos as Can You Play Skyrim Without Leaving Whiterun? And Can You Play Skyrim Without Leaving Solitude? And Can You Play Skyrim Without Leaving Rift? You clicked on this video today for one of three reasons. You've either been following this series from a certain point and I'm lucky enough to call you a fan, or because you saw me ask a stupid question and you're wondering who the jackass is that got you to click here today. Or maybe you're just someone who remembers that time that they got lost in the gorgeous and confusing hole that is Blackreach in Skyrim. Today we are once again locking ourselves within the confines of one of Skyrim's most iconic locations, the moist, cavernous, underground, glowy thing that confused and amazed people ten years ago, whereas today it seems to elicit either a reaction of hatred or nostalgic remembrance of that first playthrough. One of the most requested locations I've had for this series, Blackreach is an isolated open area of its own that feels like a separate dimension from the main game. I'm not going to be showing you today how to become an overpowered Chad and break the game within this location like usual. There's just not enough here to do so. Instead, we'll not just be looking at Blackreach today, we're going to be comparing and ranking Blackreach alongside two other comparable isolated areas in Skyrim, the Soul Cairn and the Forgotten Vale. We're going to be rapid firing through these locations while starting just like usual in this series by teleporting at level 1, naked with no equipment, and we'll be ranking the experience that each of these locations offer to a lonely and underpowered individual looking for adventure in an effort to answer the question, can you play Skyrim without leaving Blackreach, without leaving the Soul Cairn, and uh, I, I guess without leaving the for Forgotten Vale. First up on our list is the title of this video, Blackreach. Typically reached later in the game's main storyline, this is a giant cave filled mainly with Falmer, but a few other surprises can be found while running around this joint. I don't like the look that he's giving us. Rufus, get, Rufus, get away from him. Oh no. Ruf? I forgot to mention, we brought Rufus along for Blackreach, A, because I thought I'd be staying here for much longer than I did, and B, it's been a while since he's been on the channel, and I love this kid. Atta boy, Rufus. Take him on, fight for your mother. My god, he blocked him! Shit. Just just hold out for mom. Mom will be over to help you. I just two seconds. It's okay, don't worry, it builds character. I'm hungry. I don't care. You're not getting any food. I'm eleven years old and I Sorry, what? I, I, I it slipped. Oh, wisp mommies are dangerous. No, put the torch away! Get away from me, you little shit. I wish something exciting would happen. Maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's just Rufus breaking the fourth wall, but he echoes the sentiment I had the entire time exploring this place. A lot of the dungeons are blocked because we teleported here, they act as both an entrance and an exit to Blackreach, so without using it as an entrance first, we can't actually get up there. There's a few smaller lootable shacks, but at level one, the loot's pretty lame. There's some scattered enemies around, you've got Falmer, you got a couple trolls, you have the giant centurions, and the wisp mommy. Ranking Blackreach for this experiment against the others discounting Rufus because he's a mod and not part of the vanilla game, there's just not a whole lot here. Any entertainment that I got out of Blackreach was absolutely carried by the goofy adventures of me and my ragdolling son. Like most pieces of underwhelming media though, Blackreach does have its highlights. I mean, who wouldn't have fun tag teaming an army of enslaved cultists with their child? Yeah. Oh my god, they're everywhere! There's so many of them. Rufus, go fight the archer. Go! Away, son! I'll hold them off! How the hell did you get up here so quickly? Come on, guys. Leave him alone! What are you doing? Go back to work. Just go back to your jobs. There's also the secret dragon encounter you can get by shouting at the giant orange dragon ball, but again, this technically wouldn't have been possible without cheating and using console commands, which I've never been a fan of doing to access content in these videos. The fight also kinda sucked, too. Maybe this was my fault. Including Rufus trivialized a lot of the combat. He makes for an awesome distraction. It was never my intent either to cover other locations in this video. It was supposed to just be Blackreach, but the realization set in rather quickly that I needed to change course. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I thought that this experiment would be significantly more fun, but it was just kinda... It still has a special place in my heart. A game hadn't shocked me with an, oh wow, that is art, moment like Blackreach until maybe Elden Ring did it to me like 50 times. Overall though, we're here to rank these locations on the basis of region lockability. Can you teleport here and get the Skyrim experience without leaving? Eh, not really. Blackreach gets a final score of two and a half infantile ragdolls out of five. Right, we're on to the good ones now. The Soul Cairn is cool because while at its heart you know that it's just Skyrim, there's a few moments where it feels very...
There's just something metal about this place. It's got such a unique feel to it compared to so many Elder Scrolls locations that are just fantasy. Like this is Metallica in their prime. And the rest of Elder Scrolls is like red hot chili peppers. I think they're both great, and honestly, I like the Chili Peppers more than Metallica on average, but uh, every now and then, Ride the Lightning sounds pretty good. It's been years since I've given the Soul Cairn a playthrough. I couldn't tell you its relevance to the Dawnguard storyline at all, but at the very least it provides some direction and objective even when teleporting here without completing any prerequisite quests. There's around five different quote unquote quests to give you some idea of what to do. First off, I have to mention it. The Morrowind intro guy Jib being here is just ace. This ain't Jib, Jib the Eradicator. The, magnificent. the number of easter eggs packed into his dialogue is incredible, and the fact that it was canonized, that somebody was so fed up with all the cliff races in Morrowind that decided to go on a rampage is just awesome. I'm a little disappointed though he doesn't at least say, stand up. There you go. There's a vendor as well. He only takes soul husks as legal tender, which you'd be hard pressed to describe how souls manifest as crispy snacks, but also cash. It goes to prove though, that no matter what the setting is, someone will be out to make a quick buck. There's a brief side quest that grants you a horse who isn't very fast, but looks cool, and an Elder Scrolls fashion over function all day every day. Now the two main objectives here come in threes. The first is to take out three keepers around the map. Those are the cool looking guys with vapor heads, and they're definitely the toughest enemy here, which isn't saying much. In a normal playthrough, this would advance the story, but that didn't make anything happen for me, so we're kinda stuck here. The other is to acquire three Reaper Gem fragments, which you can find in a chest located underneath three of these Death Almonds in various spots. Each one has a few enemies around it, so they act as a tiny dungeon of sorts, but nothing too exciting. I tried my best to find them without googling it, but after an hour of wandering in circles, just google it. Collecting all three reaper gems leads to a secret boss fight, but man is it underwhelming. A massive ghost executioner and his only special ability is vomit? Why? Hey, I said we're rapid firing through these today, so if I did miss anything huge, please let me know. I don't take offense to it, I'm no expert, but that's kind of it for the Soul Cairn. I don't mean to get political here, but the Soul Cairn is definitely a DLC location in Skyrim. The Soul Cairn gets a region lockability score of 3 Brutal Legend featuring Jack Black screenshots out of 5. If Blackreach is the Red Hot Chili Peppers and the Soul Cairn is Metallica, then the Forgotten Veil vale is the best one of them all, boasting a thicker discography than the other two combined. Imagine Dragons is my favorite. I definitely didn't remember the Forgotten Veil vale as much as the Soul Cairn. When it was presented to me as the third option to cover for this video, it didn't even register in my memory. Maybe that's a good thing though, because the Forgotten Veil vale as a region locked experience was by far my favorite of the three. I'm not gonna lie, this place is gorgeous, man. I have a good feeling about this place. It's okay, it's okay, stop, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Thank you, mint chocolate flavored Bambi. Aw, oh, shit, not these guys. Oh, you gotta be sh Hey, at least I get a cool death out of it. Bye. <laughs> Is there anything I can use in here? Rock warbler egg. I'm gonna block his arrow. It's gonna happen. Oh my God, it worked. No way, we got it. <laughs> no, I did not expect it to actually go. Yes, the power of egg. No, I lost my egg though. I dropped the egg in excitement. We just killed a child. He doesn't even wanna fight us anymore. He knows the fight is already over. He's lost. Burn. Die. What did we get? We got a lean egg. We got, <laughs> we get early access to Travis Scott's next album. <laughs> oh no, we're back in Blackreach. Closing in on my prey. Never mind, never mind. I am the prey. Fuck, if this was Survivor, man, I'd be screwed. But it's man versus wild. I'm only one taxi cab away from the nearest hotel where me and the crew will be staying. You know, I feel like this place would be incredibly moist. You know, like humidity here has to be through the roof. Oh man, the air in here, it's like Comic-Con. <laughs> that sounded both crawly and squishy. Oh God, it is crawly and squishy. Now see, the reason why frost giants are easy to kill. Oh, don't fall, please don't fall. I need your arrows. They're very good for leveling up. What did you, did you just come out of the little pod? He just came, he got out of the matrix. Where's Morbius? No, <laughs> not Morbius. <laughs> that's the, that's the best movie of all time. Morpheus. <gasps> this thing sucks. This thing sucks. It sucks so much Palmer ass. How much health do these guys have? I don't
don't think a single quest related thing in this DLC is approachable without completing previous missions, but I don't care. The set pieces and relatively challenging gameplay compared to the other two sections were so much more fun to me. And not to mention, I could actually see here. Maybe it's an indictment on myself, but God, it was nice to have sunlight and be able to tell where I was going without getting lost. In game, of course. I don't need sunlight in real life, I never leave the basement. The gameplay loop kind of ends after you've taken out all four troll giants that you can and collected their eggs. There is a two for one special on dragons here though, but I could only try the fight with console commands. I don't think it was possible either at level 8. There was one final location here I just had to try and get to. Overlooking the giant ice lake is a looming structure that for me, it was way too tempting to avoid. Can I go from here to there, up top and around? I think it's possible. I think we can actually do it. Ah! Oh, we're hanging on for dear life here. Certainly making progress. I can't go that way. Who are you to tell me where I can and can't go? Don't you dare. Don't even start with me, game. I will go that way. No. No! Don't limit my exploration! Oh, God damn it, Todd. Maybe there's a way I can go outside, around, and then back in to the no-go zone. Like, if I go here... Can I... Wait. Wait. Hold on. Potential. No, no, we made it. No, it's still blocking me. Todd blocked once again. I can't lie. It broke my heart not being able to get in there, but I felt pretty satisfied with the three hours I spent in the Forgotten Vale and got what I thought was the most complete Skyrim experience of the three locations. The Forgotten Vale gets a region lock ability score of four defensive egg maneuvers out of five. All things considered, I wish this experiment yielded better region lock results because for the first time in this series, I'm tempted to actually just say no. It's not worth it to try only playing Skyrim in any of these spots. I'm glad we tried it though, because I think I've ruled out trying this in smaller, less significant places in these games in the future. Maybe it's time we branch out and test our efforts and say, a new franchise. Whoa!